Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today. I hope you're sitting down. Um, it occurred to me last night that there's a lot of a lot of people um, getting into the word this time of year, and they're focused on the Christmas season, and the, a, lot, a lot of them are focused on the Christmas story. Uh, we're in Romans, and we are about to hit something that is so indicting, um, it's, it's hard to think about. But <clears throat> in the true spirit of Christmas, I want to say, as indicting as this reading is, it's so important to realize that we need to repent. We have to repent. So you're going to see why in this uh, in our reading today. It is one of the parts of the of Romans that I read a few years ago that just blew me away. And I could read this over and over again. I encourage you, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to sit down with this, really read over it. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to pick through it like we do. Um, this is something uh, that is really near and dear to my heart because I see this in our society today. And so, without further ado, <clears throat> let me begin. We're going to start in verse 26 and go to the end of chapter 1 which is verse 32 for this reason God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural and in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another men with men, committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their heir. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And although they knew, sorry, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. <clears throat> so I told you yesterday um, that we were going to get into this, and this is a hard hard topic. It really is. This is offensive to a big part of our culture. That alone should tell you how indicting this is. This is something that if you get on, get out in public and start talking about this, you're going to be in trouble. So we might get some flack on this uh, little video. But the fact that it's indicting, the fact that it's controversial in our culture today is the problem. So let's begin with the first verse. For this reason, anytime you see that, you've got to go back a little bit. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. So who's he talking about? Who is Paul talking about when he says this? He's talking about those who suppress the truth. So if we go back um, into what we read yesterday, you will see he's talking about those who suppress the truth. He's talking about those who knew God but did not honor him. He's talking about those who profess to be wise 
and who exchanged the glory of God for corruptible man. So he's talking about the people that turn their back on God. God will tolerate this for so long, but he comes to a place where he turns his back on a society. And what happens when he does that is that his restraining grace is no longer there. When you think about <clears throat> the, the wages of sin, the wages of sin are death. He told Adam and Eve in the garden, you will now die. You will surely die. They didn't die right there. They didn't die right there on the spot. And that's, that's where people get lost because it doesn't happen instantaneously. If you died on the spot as soon as you sinned, none of us would be here. Adam and Eve lived, according to scriptures, uh, 900 years. But the wages of sin are death. And the only reason that we continue on is through the grace of God. When he turns his back on a society, you're left, the society is left with the consequences of of their sinfulness and there are things that you can see that happen when he turns his back on a society there are multiple examples of this in scripture I see it today in our country we have turned our back on God the first thing that's mentioned here remember this is written 2,000 years ago God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. So women, what's the natural function of a woman? Childbirth. Child rearing. And in here it's talking about not only are they not having children, they are becoming homosexual. It's interesting that Paul used women first. Women are typically the last demographic in a society to succumb to moral decay. And why is that? That's because they have children. They have a job to do. You know, you want to see somebody that works hard? Look at a, a, a mother of four kids or three kids or two kids. Look at my wife. Whatever's happening in the world does not matter. They're just doing their thing and they do it. I don't know how they get things done. But women have always been that way. That's the role they fill. They're amazing. The first thing that happens in the wrath of abandonment is we lose that. And women exchange the natural function for that which is unnatural. Verse 27. In the same way, also, the men abandon the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another and you think back to when this started to happen in our culture I would say maybe the early 70s I've put some posts out recently about uh, how liberalism is degrading our society it's degrading our schools it's really changed this country and I would say it started in the early 70s maybe late 60s but you could see it there with the women's lib movement and then the homosexual movement and when you come into this where uh, men with men committing indecent acts now here, listen to this men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the penalty of their error what do you think of that And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God. So this is happening. Men were getting sick. They were getting sick. They were dying. And they still didn't acknowledge God. They still didn't turn and come back and repent. So what's the next thing that happens? God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. 
what's a depraved mind? What's the next step? So first we have the women. We lose our women to lesbianism. Then the men follow. The men are getting sick, and yet they still don't turn back to God. In fact, they ramped it up. Then they became a protected group. You had a right to be gay. You know, I looked it up. Uh, one of the posts I put, on just a side note here, I have a post on my timeline about some of the deceptive books that are out there, and one of them that I found was uh, titled God and the Gay Community or something like that. I just, like, in a real a three-minute Google search, found some scriptures, Genesis 19, Leviticus 18, 1 Corinthians 6, Galatians 5, Ephesians 5, 1 Timothy 1, Jude 7. I could go on and on. Homosexuality is um, contrary to God. It is condemned in the scriptures. So make no mistake about it. And what we did in our society is we celebrated it. We make movies about it. We, we assign the rainbow to it. Everything is flipped upside down. So this next step, what is a depraved mind? you know what a depraved mind is? It's when you don't know what you are. Gender confusion. Do you know how many genders are recognized? I looked this up last night. 63 genders. Sometimes you feel like a, a boy, sometimes you don't. I identify as a boy, but I'm really a girl, but sometimes I feel like a boy or I want to be a boy. 63 genders, and they all have names. And we celebrate that. We protect it. That is when a society has turned... When these things are all occurring, they are directly opposite of God's plan for us. And what ensues after that? Unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife. Go through the whole list. If you really put your mind to this and you think about where we are as a society... This book of Romans, written 2,000 years ago, is describing our country right now and that we're in the wrath of abandonment. And you see everything that's occurring in our country politically, morally, spiritually. He finishes this paragraph up by saying, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. Now, these, this is us. This is the Christian community. Think about this. Although we know what God wants, we not only do the same, but we also give hearty approval to those who practice them. So the people that go through this, we protect them. We protect them. I wrote down the list of words here. Greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossips, haters of God. You can literally pick a part of our society to fit every single one of these words. And it is the Christmas season. I'm not going to go through all that. But if this doesn't show you one thing, we need to repent. We need to repent. We need to love the people in our country that are lost. We need to love them, go after them, pray for them, pray with them, tell them the truth. You know, there's none of these sinners, none of these sins are any greater than any other sin. All sin is equal in the eyes of God. 
We need to love these people that are confused, that don't get it. They have a society that tells them everything is okay, but you know what? They're miserable. I know a few gay people that they're never happy. They cannot find that happiness. And we all know why that is. They're not living the life that God created them to be. We need to go reach out to those people to love them, to share Christ with them, and to share the truth with them. We have to do it. And we need to repent. You're going to hear a lot of messages over the holidays from your churches, from your pastors, about the fruits of the Spirit and how great it is to live in Christ, the joy, the love, the peace. Don't forget the repent part. All of those things come when we repent. There are sinners in heaven and in hell. We're all sinners. The difference is the sinners in heaven, their sin is forgiven. So let's not forget to repent this holiday season. S sit down, spend some time in Romans. Read this. Really think about it. It is one of those passages that will really hit home to you. And it will make you realize that we have not changed much in 2,000 years. When we get back at it tomorrow, we're going to go to the chapter 2, the impartiality of God. God bless you. I love you. God loves you. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the morning.